and he could fill in on the right wing. I don't really look at Nico Williams there or Oscar. Oscar plays at number 10. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that, guys. I needed a minute to compose myself. Uh, I just got a text that one of my good friends passed away uh, just a little while ago. Wow. So if I'm not my normal self, the rest of this, my apologies to you guys. So we have finished the transfer window. Uh, we'll be getting ready for next episode to start the season, but the transfer window has just ended. We have been the most active club in the championship with 12 players moving around. Uh, none of these guys, Steven Sessegnon to Aston Villa from Fulham. I was just reading about him, uh, real life. Uh, looks like Leeds might be interested in him. Uh, I don't know how true that would be. I don't know if they need another fullback. Can he play? Mm, yeah, I don't know. That'll be interesting to see. I know they're, you know, today's Saturday. We just had the deal fall apart yesterday. So they've got till Monday to make, uh, I think they're looking at two more moves if they can get them in. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, we have had the transfer deadline. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, this is probably a good time just to remind everybody, uh, especially since, you know, I still, I'm still adding new people to the channel and thank you very much for that. Um, but I always want to remind you guys, a lot of, a lot of YouTubers that do this professionally, that do this for a living, you know, they've got, uh, recording rooms or they record in their bedroom or their basement or, you know, they've got an area that has, you know, that's soundproofed or whatever. And, you know, they, they do a great job. Um, I don't have that. I probably will never have that. Uh, what you get with me is live, raw, and real. Um, I record in the corner of my living room uh, and I have family and animals and, you know, we had the episode the other day where <laughs> I had the guy doing yard work and pressure washing and my microphone, uh, picked all that up and, and it didn't sound great. It didn't sound horrible, uh, when I went back and edited it, but you could tell. And, uh, you know, Luckily, that's not often, but, you know, you, you get the scenes of the cat laying on me or cats running across the back of my chair or dogs barking and the wife, you know, yelling at kids and uh, the baby talk, talking, you know, blabbering and, and crying and what, you know, whatever. And, you know, uh, it's real life. You know, I, you know, I don't lock myself away from my family and they do a pretty good job of, of keeping it to a dull roar most of the time. Uh, but every once in a while, real life creeps into my videos. And, uh, you know, that's that's who I am. That's where I'm at. And, and that's what it is. So um, for good or for bad, uh, but I've always said I do this for fun. And you guys get the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, so anyway, let's get into the transfers. So um, you saw in the first part of the video, you saw the guys that we brought in from last year, but let's take a quick look. So right now we're sitting with 8.4 million in the bank. We are right up against our payroll cap. I've had to make the budget adjustment a couple of times to get people in, uh, but we are doing pretty well. And if we take a look at the transfers and how it's going to sort out, uh, Rob Clark is uh, our new reserve keeper. Uh, he's come up through our youth system, pretty sure. No, he's the guy we signed on a free last year. And people are trying to loan him, but he's going to be our reserve keeper. Uh, O'Dane Henry, uh, I think he's going to get... Um, Oh, he rejected a contract. Okay, we were going to loan him out. And we have a guy, Simon Forstmeyer. 
he will join us mid-season. He's a young German. Uh, I believe that's when he turns 18. So this is a guy that's going to be coming in in the future. He can play up the right side. He can play right and left back. 17 years old, and he has uh, five-star potential. Not a bad player. Uh, hopefully he can develop a little bit and maybe, you know, break in with the team or, you know, we can sell him on for a profit. But let's get into our actual transfers. So you can see we uh, sold 2.5 million and we bought in 2.4 million. So not bad. I mean, you know, we still ended up, uh, you know, $100,000 to the to the good net. But uh, a lot of these guys you may have already seen, but we'll just run through everybody because that's how I do it. Daniel Postma, uh, one of our uh, reserve keepers, uh, he's not bad. But uh, he goes out on loan to Port Vale. We were going to try to sell him, but nobody nobody offered for him. So we sent him out on loan. All of these loans, they're picking up 100% of their salary, except for Baya. I think uh, one guy is uh, not. I think he got we got 40% on him. Uh, Leon Pittman, we sell him for 17500 to Crawley. Uh, Pittman is another reserve goalkeeper. Again, not bad, but he was, I think, fourth option at this point. And um, with bringing in the other keeper here, Rob Clark, uh, he was expendable. So we moved him out for basically value and, uh, well, valued at 7.75. So we made a little bit of money on him. He came in, we got him for 15000 from Portsmouth. So we made a little bit of money on him. Uh, Bobby Kamwa, uh, he was uh, going to be end of contract next year and just never really fit in. You can see he's a 58% on our roster. And so he was never really going to break in. So we move him on. We got him on a free uh, coming out of Leeds uh, when they released him and we sell him for $100,000. Uh, Nicholas Tia, uh, that was our other reserve keeper. I thought he was going to be a guy that was going to actually play for us. Um, we got him from Chelsea when they released him on a free uh, with our, that's our youth intake with our poor uh, youth facilities. But uh, we loaned him out and then uh, Newport, he played 74 matches. Jeez, that's a lot of matches. Uh, didn't play badly for him. And uh, so, uh, so they wanted him and they pick him up for, uh, an undisclosed sum, which was basically zero. Uh, I guess that's what undisclosed means, is they got him on a free. They didn't want, you know, I had a year left on his deal, and I didn't want him anymore. He was only making 99000 a year, but uh, we let him go. Dominic Ball, we moved him, uh, late, you know, and I wasn't planning on moving him, but we made some other moves. He goes to St. Johnstone for $10,000. We got him on a free from QPR, who also picked him up on a free. And he just never, I mean, he he played, he came off the bench an awful lot. Uh, the first year, last year, not so much. Only 16 appearances. Just was down the pecking order. And then we had signed some defensive midfielders, which is kind of where he slotted in. And then we were playing that 4 4 1 1. We didn't really need him. So we moved him on just to make a little bit of cash. Mazita Gungbo, he goes out on a free end of contract. Uh, Kiko, we tried to sell him. Nobody came in. So we loaned him out for 100% uh, of his wages, and he's making uh, 262000 a year. James Trafford, our former number two, our former deputy keeper, he goes off to Wrexham for 150000 We got him on a free when Man City released him two years ago. Uh, made a couple of cup appearances, uh, but we moved him on. I always thought he was going to challenge for this Palmer, Palmer for the starting role. And it just never, you know, he was just off. Mainly it was his first touch. And because I play with a sweeper keeper, it kind of downgraded him. Otherwise, he might have been our starter. Uh, Brian Mirez goes out on loan. Now, he was our reserve right back. Uh, so we made some moves there. So he goes out on loan. Couldn't sell him. Youngster Jackie Moore goes out on loan. Adam Hutchinson we brought back last season from a loan. I think he's going to pencil in at center back at some point because he's pretty good. 
but we need him having some first time, first team uh, starts uh, to develop. And we don't have the facilities to develop him right now. So we sent him out on loan in hopes that he can develop a little bit. Odane Henry, same thing. We had him on the roster last year, just ended up not playing a lot. So we sent him out on loan to Rockdale, and uh, hopefully he can develop a little bit. Terrence Baia, he goes to Bohemians on a loan. They pick up a portion of his salary, uh, not 100%, but they were the only club to come in for him. I was trying to sell him. And, uh, yeah, so he's, you know, just he wasn't going to play a lot this year. The one I wasn't planning on doing was Daniel Hart. That came in right, in fact, that was a deadline day deal. Uh, a couple of days before the deadline, we got an offer for him. We got an offer for him for about a million four. And uh, two clubs came in, and we rejected them. And he threw a fit. And 19 years old, five-star potential. I wanted to keep him. We paid $1.3 million last year for him uh, to bring him to England from uh, SB Reed in Austria. And I had high hopes for this guy. Uh, he, you know, he had 16 appearances. Didn't play great, but I thought he, you know, I thought he had a lot of potential. We've got some lone players on that right wing side where Hart plays. So Hart was depth, but I projected him to be our starter down the road because uh, he's he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Taking a look, uh, five star potential. So I was hopeful that uh, that he would be here, and he was in my plans. And I knew he would be in the rotation this year, but you know, still as a reserve. And he lost his mind and uh, demanded a transfer, put in a transfer request. And I was like, damn. So uh, we went ahead and sold him. And uh, luckily, we took we took the next bid that came in, which was around the same 1.4. And then as soon as I took that, I got another, you know, like two more bids at 1.9. So I accepted those and then rejected the 1.4. And we got several bids that came in, like four or five rounds of bids, and we ended up finally accepting the Bristol City deal. Two point two million up front, uh, with three point two million down the road. Uh, installments after so many league appearances, nothing really fancy. So this is money that we will collect, and I think, I think we've got. Oh, here we go. So 50 league appearances, we get a half million. 10 international, we may not get that one. But it is Austria, right? So, And then 40% of the profit on his next transfer, plus two installments uh, of 207000 apiece. So we'll get a good chunk of money. I think the 500000 in international might be a stretch. Uh, but he has made three under-21 caps already for Austria. It's possible that he uh, that he makes it, but yeah. So that was disappointing, and uh, so we ended up taking that. But that was the best deal that funded another move. So let's look at what we brought in. Uh, we already kind of looked at the bulk of these guys. All most of these guys were th the free releases: Rob Clark, Adam Dell, Jackie Moore, Blake Morrell, uh, and uh, we signed David Vieira. Uh, right at the end of last season. So he actually played a little bit for us. Braga B, uh, I think he played last year, pretty sure. No, he did not. Uh, but we signed him for 425000 He comes in from Portugal. Uh, I know I showed him to you. Five-star potential, three-and-a-half-star current. Uh, he's more of a defensive mid. He can also play center back and central mid. He's very well-rounded, only 20 years old. Uh, still looking for his first cap with Portugal, even on the under-21s, but he looks to be a solid player. And it was his arrival that made Kiko expendable. Uh, then we got Rob Clark in on a free, so that was the group of uh, of five that we brought in initially. Uh, Ivan Vidosevich from Hamburger for $925,000. Uh, they just bought him for 1.4 last year from Legia, which is the system that he grew up in. 
He had uh, 12 appearances, played a 6.92, scored five goals. And uh, so he looks really good. He can play basically any of the uh, seven, uh, you know, mid and attacking positions, four-star potential, three-star current. Uh, I see him more as a winger uh, than a striker. So that's kind of where I have him uh, probably penciling in. And he didn't cost us a lot of money. Uh, Vintislav Yanev from Botev Plotiv. I have no idea who that is or where that is. He cost us a half million dollars. Uh, he's 19 years old from Bulgaria, four and a half star potential, three star current. And uh, you can see they bought him from Slavia Sofia for 1.2. So we got him at about 40% of that cost. And again, he's played 49 games, two goals, four assists. And he's playing right up at about a 6.9 for the AI. So not bad, not bad at all. Right back, uh, this is what made uh, Baia expendable. Pretty solid physically. Uh, he has crossing ability, first touch, passing. And that's kind of, you know, that's been my MO in recent, uh, you know, recent saves is going after, you know, really good passers for that ball movement and distribution. So he comes on board. Uh, Gareth Swatridge from Brighton cost us $30,000. This was uh, an 18-year-old five-star potential that we were able to poach. Uh, he, was, he was actually out on loan to Oldham from Brighton last year. But uh, we pick him up, and I'm pretty happy with him. Again, he's a left back. He, he's already developing in training for us. You can see all of his stats are going up. Physically, he is pretty much a monster at this level. Uh, I, you know, if you're looking at top leagues, I understand, but I mean, he he's double you know double digits and yellows or greens pretty much everywhere. Uh, if he continues to develop, he is six feet tall. We might be able to actually train him as a center back, maybe, and he's left footed. But uh, mostly, you know, I'm looking at decision, concentration, anticipation, positioning, teamwork, work rate. Um, his passing is going up. So, you know, I'd like to see that get a little higher. But he's pretty well-rounded. I, I really like him. And he, he was young and he was cheap as hell. So I said, you know, that's a no-brainer. We'll snatch him up. And if he develops at all, you know, maybe we sell him for 2 or $3 million down the road. Uh, Freddie Quispell comes in from FC Emmon on a free. Uh, he is a striker. <sighs> he had better ratings when I scouted him, and then when he got to the team, his ratings were down. Uh, he, he was a four, four, four and a half star when I scouted him. Now only a three star. So this looks like it's going to be a bust deal. Still has very good pace. Uh, he has really good heading. He is six feet tall. Uh, dribbling. His finishing's only average. Now, I picture him maybe being more of a number 10, uh, but we'll see. He could be a bust, and we might move move on him rather quickly. Uh, Gabriel Belotti from AC Milan on a free. Uh, that was an interesting one. Uh, so we pick him up. He just didn't ever play for them. He was out on loan, and that's the only game time that he got. Uh, so we pick him up, four-star uh, potential, three-and-a-half-star current center back. Uh, he can play left back, but no crossing, so I don't see that happening. And this actually gives us three real solid center backs. So that's uh, it's going to be an interesting issue because Rawson has been the one that the – assistant coach is wanting to boot out of the lineup <laughs> so and of course he's been our star defender uh since we started the save but this guy is really good he's strong he's six foot two big heading uh so yeah he's he's gonna be in the mix so that was a big signing on a free and uh then we brought in uh roger stevenson on a loan from liverpool uh, right side, he can play central, uh, central right or attacking right. Really good four-star current, five-star potential. He's only 18 years old. Uh, he is English. Uh, he's a monster. 
this guy should be great for us. Remember, Elliot went back, and that was Elliot's position last year, so I look at him to fill in for Elliot at that slot. This last guy, this was interesting. I actually made a loan offer for him, and he rejected it and went somewhere else. <laughs> And went somewhere else. So he went to Bolton on loan. I didn't get that. I'm like, okay, we're Liverpool's affiliate. We're in the championship. But he rejects us to go to Bolton in League One. Well, then he pops up in my scouting report. And it says he's available for $550,000. I went, well, I mean, I like him. He's 21 years old. He is English. He's homegrown. Two and a half star four and a half star potential. He can play a lot of positions. He can play defensive mid, central mid. He can play number 10. He can play on the right side. And, and that fits all of our tactics, right? Pretty good physically. Pace, acceleration. First touch is great. Passing is incredible. So I see him as, as a playmaker, and that's a natural position for him. Tackling, technique, work rate, vision, Everything here is good. So I said, let's try to buy him. So I made the offer. They accepted, and he was willing to sign. So, uh, yeah, I jumped all over him. Uh, we pick him up for $550,000. So if we go into the team report, and let's, let's use uh, Parks as our main guy here. And let's start by sorting at three stars, because that – gives you this is a new tactic this not a new tactic you guys have seen this before if you've been on the channel this is a tactic i've used in previous saves i i was wanting to maybe get try try the the two strikers up top we haven't done a lot with with forest green i still have the 4411 but if we're going with this tactic i have a home and away in this tactic uh, with just a couple of small tweaks between the two, but it's the same formation. So we've got Collins and Ida up top, and then uh, Leighton Stewart would be off the bench. He would also be fill in for injuries or anything else. Then we've got Mitchell on the left side, who signed a new contract with us. McGinnis is just returning to training from his injury last season, so we didn't get to see a lot of him last year. He only had seven appearances after we picked him up, but he is going to be, I think he's going to be huge for us this year. Uh, White is there. Morell's going to get bumped down the pecking order. And then we have uh, McGinnis and Stevenson on the right side. David Vieira, Kiko, uh, who's out on loan. So we need to filter that out. Loan's out. He is out on loan, is he not? Contract. I thought he was out on loan. Didn't I just say he was out on loan? Maybe he rejected that contract. That's possible. I don't remember. Um, I'm not expecting him to be here, but we'll have Vieira and Diacati in that slot. Kiko, if he's still here. Wharton on the left side, Williams back for another year on loan, and Yanev, uh, the newcomer on the right, McGinley, Rawson, Bellotti in the center. <clears throat> and, yeah, I, I don't know. McGinley's the only left footer in that batch. Now, Wharton is a left footer as well. He can definitely play uh, center back. So we have to look down at our two stars. And that would put McGinley on the left side. So we're pretty thin on the left. So if McGinley has to fill in on the left, then that get, at least we have Bellotti. We also have Akinola for depth here in the center. Uh, Rawson would slide over to the right. Uh, Ibu Adams, McGinnis can move to the inside. There's Clarkson making an appearance on the right side. Uh, Crouchy Vidal on the left. Diacati, Ibu Adams in that central spot, and then we have Oscar Vidal. I tried to move Oscar. Nobody wanted him uh, because I'm kind of going away from that number 10 in the 4411. Uh, Alex Palmer still uh, starting, and Rob Clark now the deputy in goal. Although, pretty evenly currently, we may let them battle it out, but I, I do see Clark taking over from Palmer at some point. 
So that's the uh, that's the roster. Let me know what you guys think of the moves. We don't. Uh, he joins mid year, and he's a future player, so nothing really there. So let me know what you think of the business. Uh, you know, we did have to adjust our budget a little bit, uh, but we still came out on the positive side of the moves. Uh, we did make a pretty nice profit this month uh, so far, but we have lost $800,000 for the year, but that was just due to some expenditures and how they fell. Uh, we've made that up uh, double this month, so we're still 1.5 to the good, plus whatever we're going to make this month. 8.4 in the bank, although we are right up against that payroll cap. Taking a look at the, uh, there, where was a, uh, here we go. So the payroll expenditure, so Crystal Palace, Southampton got relegated. Of course, they're bringing Premier League levels into, into the championship. Uh, but we are still down uh, at the bottom. We're barely above of MK Dons, who were just recently promoted <laughs> so, uh, and then Hull just came up and I think, uh, Luton or Rothram, I don't remember which one just came up as well. So they're already spending more than us, but you know, we're trying to keep that down until we know that we are financially viable and we are making money, but I want the club to be profitable as long as we can survive because I'm still trying to get expansion uh, of course remember they the board threw out the stadium expansion right at the end of last season we saw that at the beginning of the video so that's going on currently i don't know what that cuts us back to as far as ground currently because one of the stands is closed for the expansion we're also improving our training facilities so I think based on our interaction with the board earlier in the video, they don't want to invest in youth right now. So I think we continue to try to improve our training facilities to maximize developing these two and a half and three star players into the four and five star potential that they have. And if we can do that, then we can start selling more players for more money uh, which would then fund buying more and better youth players, uh, younger players, and, and that perpetuates itself. And then once we have done that and we have expanded our stadium to and, and selling out the stadium still, then we can look at improving our youth intake and our youth facilities. But I think I'm going to just go after training initially. And we will push on that as much as we can. Now, the debt is coming into play. We've had to start repaying the loans um, on both of them. So we're paying back uh, about $71,000 a month. Well, $70,000 a month. Uh, what else? We didn't have any staff changes. Taking a look at dynamics, the locker room has gone down, but that's just because of the number of new players. Uh, Nathan McGinley got really hot about Nathan Hart being sold. And, you know, I had a talk with him and I'm like, hey, you know, he wanted to leave. He demanded a transfer and he's like, well, you just caved to pressure. You could you could have forced him to stay. And I'm like, eh, you know, whatever, just get on with life. Uh, so hopefully, you know, he uh, he sees. I mean, we brought in uh, we brought in that guy from Liverpool right there at the end. We also have the guy from Liverpool on loan in that position. So we're not gonna miss him, you know, at all. I don't think um, team cohesion is still good because all of our core group is still here. Uh, leadership support is still very good, although it has dropped. Uh, due to this. So we'll see how that goes. Taking a look at the hierarchy. We do have a lot of players down here in this bottom part. Uh, eight players with no real opinion. I think uh, McGinnis will move up quickly into a highly influential. Remember, he only played seven matches last year. So 
I think now when he comes in and starts playing regular, I think he will bump up. Uh, McGinley is my captain, so I'm a little perturbed at him uh, getting on my bad side. Uh, but you can see the guys. Kiko tried to sell. Oscar tried to sell. Vidal, uh, relatively new. Uh, Akinola hasn't been here. Mitchell, you know, he started last season, and he just got a new contract. So, I mean... Quispell, who just signed, already supports me. I don't know why Mitchell doesn't. Stewart's new. Uh, Crouchy's been out on loan. And Janiel Bennett's been uh, out on loan several times. So most of these guys are just guys that haven't been around the club. So I think that's going to come around. Of course, I got the new contract. Uh, we got a bump from, what was it, 288000 to 665000 a year. Uh, we'll get a $50,000 bonus if we win the FA Cup, and this will run for two more seasons. So that's what's going on there. Taking a look at our friendlies, 1-0 uh, loss to Rangers in one of our money makers. Uh, we beat Celtic 2-0 in our other, Aaron Collins, with the first goal of the season, and Bellotti uh, off a corner. Uh, for his first goal for the club. Not official because it was a friendly. We beat Lincoln 2-0. Uh, Aaron Collins and Leighton Stewart, both strikers up top. A 2-1 loss to PSV. O'Dane Henry got on the score sheet. I thought it was Jimi Hendricks that scored the game winner, and I would have been all right with that, but it was Jorrit Hendricks. Shortwood, uh, yeah, 15-0. Yeah, we scored a few goals. Nathan McGinley scored four. Uh, we actually got an own goal in there. Daniel Hart, uh, his last goal for the club. So that was nice. Bishop's Crew, 7-0. Those were some easy games. 5-1 loss to Liverpool. Roger Stevenson was sent off in the 34th minute. And, uh, yeah, they scored a few goals after that, but they scored a few goals before it as well. So 5-1 loss. And then uh, Britscombe and Thrupp, we beat 10-1. Another hat trick from Ida, hat trick from Collins. Don't forget Collins set the all-time Forest Green uh, scoring record last season, so he can add to that. I thought about trying to move him this year, but figured that was a position that we were pretty much set at. So what I'm going to have to decide this year, if we take a look at the squad, Roger Stevenson is new. But Nico, Harvey White, Adam, Ida, all of their uh, all of their loans end this year. So I need to decide: Do I want to try to extend their loans again? I mean, he this is his third year on loan with us, and he's got forty goals. You know, almost almost one in two. Now his contract is up at the end of this season. So it's possible in January we try to sign him. Harvey White, fifth season here on loan from Tottenham. His contract's up at the end of the year. I would certainly like to pick him up for sure if we can do that. Nico Williams, it's what, his third year here on loan out of Liverpool. Now he's under contract. Geez, that was a long contract. So he's under contract He's under contract for four more years with them, four years. So I don't think we're going to get him. And look at his salary. I mean, his salary is just going through the roof. Luckily, we're not having to pay anything for him. But uh, that's a guy we may try to keep keep here. And then uh, Roger Stevenson, first year here from Liverpool, he's under contract for two years. So that you know, we'll see how he plays, how much he plays, and if that's somebody that we want to try to extend. But you know, I think we may, tr you know, White and Ida, if they don't get extended, we I think we definitely try to sign them at their values. I don't know if we could afford them, to be honest. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Because uh, you can expect these these salaries of theirs, 74 and 134, probably jumping up here. And you can see Farron Rawson, 793000 valued at $11 million. 
Uh, and then we've got a lot of guys in that half million range. So we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, we will come back for Preston and Millwall next episode for the season openers. And then we will get into the heart of the season. And, uh, you know, we'll play it by ear on how fast we go through it. Um, you know, of course, we want to try to get through as many seasons as we can trying to get to the Premier League. Uh, as FM21 bears down on us. I know this video went back and forth and we had the, 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 the clothing changes, you know, from beginning to end and in the middle. Um, you know, so thank you for bearing with me on this one. This was a tough, uh, tough episode to get through, uh, but we had to get through it to move on. So uh, we're moving on. Yeah, I'm going to miss my friend, but uh, glad you guys are here. And uh, let's get on with the season. Uh, who do you think's our player of the season this year out of these new signings? Who makes the biggest impact for us uh, this year or in, in the rest of our history with Forest Green? <clears throat> I don't count loan players because they're not really ours, but, you know, we can look at loan players if you want to. I think Bilotti's going to be a big impact signing. I think he's. I think he'll play a lot. I think we'll have good rotation, and I was. I would like to have gotten a left back, but I did not. But that may be something I'm forced to do in the uh, January transfer window. Maybe I need to recall one of these guys out on loan if I have somebody. And let's check our U23 as well. Okay, so Gareth Swatridge is there. Let's move him to the senior squad. There you go. I didn't realize he wasn't. So I think that gives us our depth there. So we'll have Wharton, Swatridge can fill in. And I think he can do the job. He is left-footed. McGinley, I think that's perfect. So I was thinking about maybe having to bring Baia back. But with Swatridge there, I don't think I need to. So there's our roster for the season. I'm looking forward to McGinnis this year. Because we didn't see a lot of him before he had that major injury last year. I'm wondering how Joe Morrill's going to react not getting as much game time because we're not going with the two central mids. Because Morrell, even if McGinnis moves out to the right, which I don't know now if he will, isn't there a oh, free kick taking 14 12? So yeah, White's our best free kick taker. It would behoove us to have him in there, and he's solid. So we could move McGinnis to the right. He's got good crossing. But boy, Stevenson. Stevenson's a beast out there, man. 16 pace, 17 acceleration. I mean, he just blows McGinnis off the ball. I think we've got to go Stevenson out there. I think we have to, and that means White may be on the bench. May be on the bench. Now, if we if we if we look up to it and we don't need the more defensive presence, then maybe we bump that defensive mid back up into a, a 4-4-2. That's possible. Something we'll play with. Taking a look at the season preview, uh, we are picked to finish 18th. So we're picked to stay up. But remember, we're supposed to finish top half for the board this year. So we've always beaten these expectations. Uh, Birmingham uh, just got promoted. They're picked to stay up safely. Hull should stay up. MK Don's uh, projected to go back down, along with Luton and QPR. Southampton was relegated, should go right back up. But Barnsley and Bristol City are not picked to go back up not even to make the playoffs this year. Interesting. All right, well, let's get on with the season. I will see you guys for the kickoff next episode. Hit that like button. Let me know what you think about the transfers. And uh, again, thanks, thanks for bearing with me through this one. This was a tough one to get through. Uh, appreciate you guys, and we will see you next time. Take care. Bye.